Oh, hey guys. Today we're going to be doing a, a CPU fan replacement for an HP Envy X360 convertible series. And the exact model here, if you just follow my cursor, it's the uh, the 15-ED 1003CA. Uh, my client was actually having a, an issue with the uh, getting the CPU fan air right at the boot up. And then within seconds afterwards, it would just shut down. So he wasn't even able to power up the system and, and keep it on. It would just shut down within about five seconds. So, um, and, and, and that was the air that he was getting. So he actually had called me initially and, and didn't bring me the laptop. So all I was able to do was order the fan for this model, which one company was selling it as a, as a dual fan piece, which some models do have, you know, on the left and right. Cause, the, there's one fan that, that cools out the GPU, then one, the other one cools out the CPU. So for this model here, since I ordered the one that was a dual fan, it did come with a proper fan, which I needed just to put on the right side of his laptop. And his left side was actually bare, as you will see, you know, in the, you know, going through the video. So the first thing to do is I'm going to just flip it upside down and just put your screen side facing on your table. And as you, if you can see here, um, there's two strips of this, uh, this rubber piece here that's actually adhered with, with a double sided tape underneath it. And as you can see, half of his, uh, you know, his rubber is, is you know, it's, it's kind of worn off because of, of long term use. So, you know, yeah, so half of it was kind of just worn off. As you can see here, there's a few screws that are exposed. But the best thing to do is, you know, just keep in mind, if you want to retain or keep what you already have as these rubber pieces here, he has about 80 percent up here, as you can see from left to right and 35, 40 percent of the bottom here. But. What you don't see, you know, at, at a close range is that underneath this, it looks clear. There's actually a, a clear, pla uh, you know, uh, plastic strip that's actually, uh, that, that's actually stuck to this. So just if you want to use a paring knife, you can actually peel it right off. So just be careful. Just start off in the corner here. What I'll do is I'll show you a closer picture here. As you can see, you can see me pulling off the strip. So what I did was on this side here, I started from the left side and then I just use a paring knife or a sharp tool to to pick at the uh, the clear tape so that you can remove remove from left to right and do the same thing as as on the other side from the top so once you've done that i'll show you the exposed screws here so as you can see he's missing one screw um but there's supposed to be three screws at the top right three screws at the top left and then one at the bottom left and then one at the bottom right and then right in this corner here I don't know if you see, just follow my cursor. There's a T5. You need a Torx 5, uh, you know, a bit to remove that screw because it's not the same as the rest. So just remember, if you're removing the three on the top left, three on the top right, and then one at the bottom left and the bottom right, you won't be able to remove this panel until you get that, that T5 bit. You know, so just remember that you need that also, okay? So which is actually situated right there. Um, here, I'll, I'm going to actually just um, click on the picture to show you a closer shot of it as you can see there there it is you know so so just remember that you can't continue one until you actually get a t5 you know bit for that so and then the next thing to do is once you have all of the screws removed you know this is actually how you situ situate your your laptop afterwards so keep it the screen side up and then just just open up the laptop and just leave it on a slight angle like this and from this one here, because usually with a lot of laptops, when I do a teardown or take apart, it, I, I normally use my fingernails, to be honest with you. You know, my, I don't know. Um, it, it's not really hard to remove them, but this one here, you will need a pry tool. So if you look at this picture here, this is the area that I'm actually attack. Oops, sorry. This is the area that I'm actually doing first. It's right here is on the top right. Apologize for that, guys. Um, if you look at it here, this is the area that I'm actually targeting first because the easiest place to open up this section here is either the top left or the top right because as you can see, there's a little gap here. So what you can do is you can either put your pry tool in this corner here, usually in the top left or the top right or in this corner. I, I, I kind of highly recommend you not to put a lot of pressure on this hinge cover part because if you put too much pressure on it you can actually snap it and break the area so i would you know unless you're very careful if you have a very small like a mini flat screwdriver then yes you can do that just make sure that you brace this corner here with your one hand hold this area here so that it doesn't go back or get pushed back and then just use your pry tool to lift this section up because once you lift the section up you can easily just insert your pry tool here 
to start it because once you have it started then the rest is very simple so just remember you can use a mini flat screwdriver here don't use a large and if you use a larger one just make sure that it's really important is to hold this tab here this hinge cover with your other hand and then use your right hand to lift this section up so once you have it up a little bit then just slip your pry tool in here then once you got it in here the rest is very simple and as you can see here i'll show you another picture here so this is what I actually did. So what I did was I just, once you get your pry tool in here, you can easily follow through to the rest of the other side and you work your way from the top right and all the way down to the bottom right, to the bottom front right. And here I'll show you here. And this is me being at the, 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 the corner here, which is right here. And then this is the picture here. So once you do that, it's very simple to follow through and, and just run your pry tool right across. And the only one thing I, I wanted to make note too at, at the front end, which I noticed, these tabs are not built like a regular HP and a lot of other laptops. Their tabs that release are a little bit unique than, the, than, than a regular model here. Um, most tabs are usually at these corners, like literally within a few millimeters at the tip. So once you start running your pry tool, it starts to pop. You know, but with this model here, their tabs are more like closer to the middle, like about every one and a half inch apart so you know you kind of have to just what you do is you put your pry tool in there and lift it upwards so lift your pry tool towards the you know the uh, the bottom panel and then just lift it upwards and then it'll actually pop you know or you can actually just put your fingernails underneath and just pull up and that's the other way that for you guys to do it and if you take a look at it here so once you run your 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 pry tool or, or you can just put your left hand on this corner here and then just use your right hand and just lift it up you will start feeling that that the tabs here the, i think there's about four or five tabs one there one there one there and two to the right once you start lifting it or pop it up with your pry tool you, you will actually hear a pretty big pop because they're not they're not regular fasteners so once you do that you can easily just remove the panel and you don't have to worry about any wires being stuck from the bottom panel itself to the laptop so you don't have to worry about that or anything pulling is just the the bottom plate cover just once you remove that and this is actually how your system will look like and as you can see here this is the battery here um you know i for this model here i've been doing this for 24 years you really don't have to disconnect the battery if you don't want to because you're not replacing uh, your lcd screen or you know or your your ssd which is situated right here as you can see this is the m.2 and like I said, I had mentioned earlier, I thought this fan that actually had came with two fans because this is where the area for the second fan, you know, and I don't think there's any connector for this anyways. I mean, so I guess other models do have two CPU fans because the, the, the one that I did buy from an Amazon seller did actually have both fans, one here and then the one for this side on the left side. Uh, but for this model here, like, like what I said, you know, um, which is the the ED1003CA, we're just replacing this fan here on the right so if you want to all you have to do is with this one here i'm going to show you how to replace the battery uh, remove the battery too because if you want to make sure that you're 100 percent safe i'll show you how to remove the battery it's not a big deal because i did it also anyways just to show you guys for the the tutorial here and it's very simple if you look at it here there's a notch here on the the top and one at the bottom all you have to do is just take your thumbnail or your fingernail and just really hook the corners and just wiggle it outwards towards the cable here just just back towards the uh, to the left side and once you wiggle it it comes off pretty easy as you can see here it just comes off pretty easy but just make sure that you put your your fingernail on that notch there if you look at my cursor carefully there's a notch on both sides just you know hook onto it and just wiggle it out you know there, there's no special fasteners or, or latch locks that lock this in place so you don't have to worry about tearing apart the socket from the board where this connects to so don't worry about that because some models from asus and other brands are like that so just make sure because they don't always come off that easy you know and as for the cpu fan here this is a closer look of it and i forgot to show you guys here because there is a little cover if you look at it here this is just a little uh like a little a heat plate i guess you know or some some, some type of a shield that they put onto it um, but all you have to do is just pull it anywhere from, you know, from the right side or the left side. It'll just come off very easily. And this is actually how it looks afterwards. And if you look at it carefully here, there's only two screws that actually hold this fan in place. Very easy to remove. So you just remove this screw here and this one here. And, and then uh, I find that for you to actually have easier space to remove this connector, it's better off to remove this screw and that screw because then you can actually just remove this fan. And there's no trick in pulling it out. It's very easy. 
So once you lift it up, just, just kind of rest this towards this section here without pulling the cable. And I'll show you how the uh, the notch looks like so that you can remove this, you know, this fan connector without, you know, tearing it apart because the cables are very weak. But I mean, if you're replacing it, it, it doesn't really matter. I just don't want you guys to pull that out and end up tearing the cable and getting this, this you know, this uh, the connector stuck into the, uh, you know, the, uh, the male area here. So what you do here is if you look at it here carefully, I'm going to rotate this here to the cable. As you can see here, this actually has the same notch setup, almost like a battery. So if you look at it here, there's a notch there, a notch there. So you're removing it exactly the same way. I just want to make sure you guys see this with a really a good close-up so that you have a better idea of how to pull it out. So remember, right? Just put your fingernail on these corners here at the top and one at the bottom there and just wiggle it out and it'll actually come off the same way. So just remember that. And remember the orientation when you're plugging it back in, there's a reason why they actually had put a little white marker on that because that's the top end when you would plug in the uh, the CPU fan. So as you can see here, the original part here also has a little, you know, white dimple that's actually, that has a marker that's on the top. So just to, an indicator to let you know that that's the top side of where you plug it into, to the motherboard. So remember that, right guys? Just just wiggle out the corners and then the, the connector will come right off. And you know, so once you have that apart, you know, just put in your new fan and put it back into this, you know, uh, this setup here. Just open up your laptop and just put it into an L shape there and then just push the power button just to make sure that it goes on. And as you can see here, the laptop does go on and it doesn't shut back down. And I don't see the error. So the error is completely gone. And, and, uh, and then once you're done that, you're pretty good to go. So the only one thing I wanted to make a note that while you're closing it up, you know, when you're putting the back plate cover back on, these corners here, you can just thumb it in there, even at the top, like the, the top left, the top right. You can thumb all these corners on the right side and the left side very easily. And remember, right, since these tabs here are not popping out from the, the front lip and they're more situated about halfway up, remember to put your thumb all the way over the whole one inch section here from this line to the to the to the to the lip there just if you push it hard from the the, the front left to the front right like it's exactly how where my thumb is situated you start off from here and you just keep going right across from left to right you will actually feel it pop and it will actually seal properly because when i actually try to put my thumb right about halfway up around this at the lip here it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't close up you know it would stay open so that their, their, their latching system is completely different on this model than other HP models have worked on. So remember, right, just push hard. You won't do anything to it. And then just, just run it from left to right, doing the same thing with your thumb imprint here, right in the middle, and just push it really hard. And then it'll, you'll hear it snap right back in. And once you got that, you can put your screws back in, and then you guys are good to go. You know, and uh, you know, I hope that this video helps you guys out. And if you have any questions or, you know, any comments, just, just post them in the, the comment section, and I'll, I'll gladly help you guys out. Have a good weekend, guys. Cheers.